Welcome back. In this video, I'll be going over how to use the slash data command for Minecraft Java Edition version 1.16. I'll be going over everything I think is noteworthy with the data command in the current version. If any additional functionality is added to the data command in the future, I hope that what I cover here will give you enough context to be able to navigate anything that may be added. This is a lengthy video because I'm going over a lot of information, so I'll have chapters set up so you can skip past anything you already know or skip to specific things you may need to know. So to start off, let's go over Minecraft's value types. This part's just going to be covering the terminology of everything, so you won't get lost when I start throwing the names of stuff out there. Minecraft's supported values are strings, numbers, objects, and arrays. Strings are just strings of characters, generally within quotes. Typically in games, strings will be used to store names and display text in chat or on items. There are six types of numbers supported. Four of which, bytes, shorts, ints, and longs, are integers, and two of which, floats and doubles, are floating point numbers. These are differentiated by the amount of bytes used to store the number. A byte is notated as number B, stored in 8 bits, or a byte, and has a range of negative 128 to positive 127. A short is 2 bytes, notated as number S, with a range of negative 32,768 to positive 32,767. An int, or integer, is just notated as a number with no letter afterwards, stored in 4 bytes, with a range of negative 2,147,483,648 to positive 2,147,483,647. Integers are used for scoreboards and are generally the limit for any calculations in-game for that reason. And lastly, longs are stored in 8 bytes, meaning it has the largest range of values, going from negative 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,808, to positive 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,807. Longs are stored as number L. Now, floats and doubles are hard to explain the limit of due to how floating point numbers work, so I won't try to explain it much, but basically floats and doubles are numbers with a decimal point in them. A double is just a more precise float, so it's used in places where you need high precision like in coordinates, while floats are used in less precise numbers like health and camera rotation. Next are containers. There are two types of containers supported by Minecraft, objects and arrays. Objects, or compounds, are containers that hold name-value pairs. An example of a name value pair would be ID Minecraft Stone. Objects are the basic container and are generally what things will be contained within. And arrays, or lists, are containers that hold sorted lists of values of any type, including objects and arrays. Arrays can only contain one type of data at a time though, so you cannot enter both a string and an integer, or an integer and a double into the same array. Now that I've covered value types, let's go over the types of targets. There are three target types, block, entity, and storage. Block and entity targets are fairly similar. The main difference is just how you select your target. For a block, you specify an XYZ position, and for entities, you use a selector. When selecting an entity, you must specify a singular entity. So if you're using an at E selector, you must use limit equals 1 for it to be valid. Now, most data on entities and blocks cannot be modified arbitrarily, and has to be a valid change for it to succeed. Minecraft does have data validation, so if you're attempting to modify data somewhere in a way that isn't allowed, the change will not complete. Uh, You'll receive a feedback message saying that you have modified the selected data, but the modification will not actually be there. There is some data that cannot be modified at all. This applies to all player data. Any attempt to modify player data will send an error message reading unable to modify player data. There are only a few places where arbitrary data can be added and or modified. Any data in the tag object of an item can be modified, and any data in storage can be changed in any way without restriction. Speaking of storage, accessing storage spaces is slightly different than blocks or entities because it uses a namespaced file for the data storage instead of something directly within the game world. To create a storage space, you just need to write something into one. Now, that may sound weird, but if you write something into a storage space that doesn't exist, the game will create one with that name. Now, when naming a storage space, you can specify a namespace before the name, so namespace colon storage name, or you can just do storage name and the namespace will default to Minecraft. 
Now, generally, if you're doing something that's heavy in data operations, you want to do it within a storage space because the game doesn't need to run heavy data serialization and conversion every time you modify the data within it. Most of the examples we'll be using within this video will be using storage spaces, so if you're unfamiliar with using them, hopefully you'll understand how to use them better by the end. Now that I've covered the differences and types of targets, let's go over the most basic data operation, merge. Data merge just requires you to select the target you want to merge your data into, and then the data you'll be merging in. The syntax for this command is just data merge, then block entity or storage, then your selector. After your selector, you write the data you want to merge in inside of an object. Let me provide you an example of what a merge operation looks like to clarify what this does. For this example, I'll be starting with the storage space with this data, and I'll be merging in this data. And as a result, I will get this. Additionally, I can merge this and get this as a result. Now that covers the base functionality of data merge, generally the use cases of this are rare nowadays that we have data modify merge, which shares the same functionality with some additional syntax that I'll cover when I go over data modify later in this video. So next, let's go over paths, as well as data get and data remove to provide a basic use case. Data get and data remove use identical syntax, both specify a path, the only difference is one returns the value of the specified path and the other removes it. Data get has a few use cases outside of just checking to see what data is in a specified path, mainly for execute store, uh, which I'll go over later on. So that's enough of data get and data remove. Let's actually go over what paths are and how they work. A path is essentially just a set of instructions on how to navigate through objects and arrays. Let's start with an example, and I'll go over how to determine what path to use for getting a specific value. So let's say you want to get the custom name of this item that's stored in a jukebox. So let's work backwards from the value we want. We want the name string. So the name string is inside of the object called display, and the display object is inside the tag object, which is inside the record item object. Now that we know the name of the objects in order, let's notate our path. The first object is record item, so we start with that, then we add a dot after that. Then after that, we do tag, then another dot, then display, then another dot, and lastly name. If we do data get block with the path record item dot tag dot display, we will get the value custom stone. Now that is basically how you create a path for nested objects. Now let's go over how to specify paths for an array. If you need to access something that's in an array, you can specify an index. You can specify an index by putting the value of the index in square brackets. An index is the location in the array the value you want to access is at. So if we have the array 45, 76, 12, 34, the number 45 would be at an index of 0, and 34 would be at 3. Alternatively, you can index from the end of the array with a negative number. So 34 could be accessed with negative 1, and 45 could be accessed with negative 4. So if that array of numbers was named numbers, and in the storage da colon ta, you could get the value 76 by doing data get storage da colon ta numbers square brackets 1. You can also specify indexes and arrays by searching for a specific value within the square brackets. For an example, we'll be using a chest with some items in it. So let's get the ID of the item in slot 5. To do that, we can use items square brackets then curly brackets slot colon 5b dot id and we will get minecraft colon stick now that's a basic overview of array indexes i do have a side note before we move on if you don't specify an index when reading an array it'll return the entire array but if you use empty square brackets it'll specify all entries in the array this can be useful if you want to remove or modify all values in an array at the same time so that's an overview of paths Next, let's move on to data modify. There are five operations you can do with data modify. Set and merge are the regular operations, and append, prepend, and insert are the array operations. I'm going to start by talking about the set and merge operations. Additionally, I'll be going over the difference between value and from and how to use them. When using data modify, you have the syntax slash data modify, then your target types, target, target path, and then append, insert, merge, prepend, or set, and then you have value in from. Data modify has the ability to change the data at the specified target and path. The most basic operation for data modify is set, allowing you to directly change the value at the specified path to the data you have entered. 
If you're operating in a location that allows arbitrary data modification, there's no limit to what you can modify to. Data modify set overrides the data at the specified path. You have two ways you can specify the data, value and from. For an example, you have data in the jukebox at 0, 1, 0, and data in a storage space DA colon TA. Using value, you can change the value of the specified path into the stated value. An example being slash data modify block 010 record item dot tag dot custom model data set value 1. When using from, you can specify a target to copy from. The syntax is the same as choosing a target and path to set your data into. An example being slash data modify block 010 record item dot tag dot custom model data set from storage DA colon TA custom model data. Next is modify merge. Modify merge is limited on what you can modify with it. The path you specify must be an object itself. If you're using value, you have to format the value as an object. And if you're using from, your path must lead to an object. The merging behavior is identical to what I covered earlier when I went over data merge. So now, let's go over the array operations, append, prepend, and insert. Append and prepend are similar operations. For both, you specify a path that leads to an array, as well as the value you want to insert, whether it be a direct value copied from somewhere else. The difference between the two is append places a specified value at the end of the array, and prepend places it at the start of the array. Insert has an extra bit of syntax associated with it. Similar to append and prepend, your path must specify an array, but with insert you also must specify an index you want to insert your value into. An example of data modify insert in the storage space DA colon TA with numbers 23, 76, 84, and 19 would be data modify storage DA colon TA numbers insert to value 50. This will place the number 50 into the third index in the array, leaving you with the data 23, 76, 50, 84, and 19. When using insert, you can also use negative indexes, so using slash data modify storage DA colon TA numbers insert negative 3 value 64 would leave you with 23, 76, 50, 64, 84, 19. One last note, data modify set can operate on arrays if you specify an index you want to modify. So for example, slash data modify storage DA colon TA numbers 2 set value 123 will give you 23, 76, 123, 64, 84, 19. A couple last notes on arrays with regards to paths. If you have an array of arrays, you can stack square bracket index specifiers. And if you have an array of objects, you can add a dot after the square brackets to specify a value within the object. So that covers the data command. Uh, I do want to end this video by covering execute store because that has a few things related to the data command that can be useful. So execute store can write a numerical value into a target the same way you'd specify writing something with data modify set. So you can specify a target and a path and then you specify the type of number you want to write it as. So byte, short, int, long, float, or double. Then you specify a scale. Scale is a value that the output is multiplied by before it is written. Execute store has two modes, result and success. Result outputs the number that the command you have run with that execute command outputs, and success just outputs a 1 if the command succeeds and 0 if it fails. Execute store can also write to a scoreboard, so if you do data get, you can get a value onto a scoreboard. Depending on what path you specify, you can get different values. If you specify a number, it will return that number. If you specify an array with no square brackets at the end, it'll return how many entries are in that array. And if you specify a string, it'll return the length of the string. Execute store can also return a value from an if statement. So if you do execute store whatever if entity and a selector, it will return how many entities match that selector. There are several commands that have query syntaxes that, that return a number that you can use for execute store as well as fill can return a number on how many blocks were filled if you're doing fill replace and stuff like that. You can sort of mess with it. Pretty much anything that returns a number in chat can be used in execute store to get that number into a scoreboard or into data. Well, that covers the data command in about as much detail as I think is necessary. I hope that covers it in enough detail to not be so confusing to people. If you have any questions, ask them down below and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and I will catch you all next time.